Hi, everybody. It is Tara Boothby and Ellis Chan, registered psychologist from Soldier in Psychology. And Ellis and I always have great conversations. We've been talking about a lot of fun things today, interesting things personally and with our work. And um, yeah, so Ellis brought up this interesting topic, which is adjacent emotions. So what do you think, Ellis? Like, what is important for us, for kids, for teens, for everybody about adjacent emotions? Well, I think that it, that really came up because I'm thinking at this time, like I'm a person that um, when, when exam time comes, which is typically this month for college kids, um, this is when I would feel a lot of anxiety. I would feel a lot of worry. There'd be a lot of pressure. This is final exam time. And I always, I always remember that that final exam season, I would feel that anxiety. But what was sort of interesting is that that was an obvious one. What was a surprise to me was the adjacent emotions that would come from that. Because I was anxious, I was in a fight or flight state, I would be a lot more reactive. And then so I'd be quicker to anger. I'd be quicker to get frustrated. Um, and that also got tied in with poor sleep and everything when I did like last minute cramming. But I'm thinking even as we talk about school now, um, we're talking about third wave. We're talking about Ontario shutting schools down. Those are all playing a role to leading to uncertainty and anxiety and a whole bunch of other things. But maybe one thing that comes to my mind as we're in this sort of like exam season or we're not sure if schools are going to get shut down or they're already shut down already is that when we're seeing behaviors from kids, we're seeing reactionary behaviors. Um, one thing that I, I, I've realized that I have to be super mindful of is that when I'm getting that reactionary behavior from somebody, maybe that's um, someone reacting out of frustration, out of anger what's actually underneath it because often it's i might be quick to judge i might be quick to say like whoa you're totally out of line over there with that reaction there's a consequence for that there's limit setting there's whatever it is but underneath that just even being aware of where is that coming from is that a reactionary behavior because there's a whole bunch of tension underneath maybe a whole bunch of anxiety maybe it's sadness you're losing your friends you're not able to have that graduation that you find you're going to have with your friends or that year-end party or being able to say goodbye to your grade. Those are big deals, big milestones that you're not able to do. And I, th I think that's just something that I have to be really mindful of when I think about um, when somebody's having a big feeling in this time. What's it saying underneath over there? Yeah, I, I, I think that's super important. And then at home too, right? Like we, we have all sorts of things going on in our home life and we're cooped up, you know, and, and so other family members, their, their environment is limited as well. So emotionally, <laughs> what we see on the surface and what's going on underneath um, and then how that's impacting us. Yeah, I think that's, you know, even as you say like that, being even at home. Like, I know my baseline has never really gone to flat zero. It's always hovering. Like, if we did, like, a zero to ten scale, if, you, if you're if you in a session with me, that's usually what I use as my Likert scale. Ten is the worst you can imagine. Zero is not an issue at all. Before, I might have always been maybe a zero, maybe a one. Now, with all these things happening and so much uncertainty in the structure of our day-to-day, -day, I'm probably sitting at a two, three, sometimes four, and that's... There's nothing specific that day. I'm not having a bad day. I'm not having something bad happen to me, but I'm flooded a little bit that there's a lot of tension, a lot of pressure, a lot of uncertainty. And then so I'm more reactive than I, than I tend to be uh, pre COVID pandemic, all of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And we've talked about that in different ways on the blog, you know, like how our, our threshold is, is heightened or e-brake is stuck on or lid is flipped. All these different metaphors that different schools of thought use, but it is hard. We're more tender, we're more touchy, nobody's doing well. And mm. we're recre recreating the wheel time and time again with lockdowns and open ups and phases and all this stuff, vaccines and, and it's hugely stressful. Um, so what I think of, the end of a semester um, 
for me, what used to always happen was I would finish my exams or I would hop in the car to drive home from college or university. And then I yeah. crash and get sick. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And it's that similar thing of like, we, we kind of either, we stuff some sort of feelings and mm. then Frank says, you know, we put it somewhere, you try to hide it away. It's going to sneak out some other way. And so whether that's in a behavioral thing or a physical body, our, our bodies want to ooze out the toxic emotion and it, it, mm. it can be sneaky and, and adjacent, this adjacent emotion. Sure. And maybe being aware of that, that's that, that question mark to always just kind of be mindful of. Because I think when you say that you might crash, I feel like that's where I might react. And I have that big bloat or something. And it's just something small, but that was, that was too much for me that day. Yeah, it's interesting. So there's something about our reptilian response in there too, our fight, flight, freeze, faint stuff. And it's all connected, preliminary and post. It's, it's just we're, we are um complicated beings mm. uh, but so i guess a little bit of a preventative thing is connecting in checking in on how we're feeling acknowledging mm. the painful emotions and the stress that we're under that might be something that can help to to ease some of the byproduct or the adjacent emotion sure i love that and you know i'm even thinking too one of the question marks we often have, and it's a question mark that I'll often get asked is what was causing it? And you know what? Sometimes we don't know. There's so many things happening right now that they're all contributing and playing a role. We may not actually know what that one key catalyst was, but even just being aware that I'm in that reactional state, communicating that, letting people know or asking others and being and giving them the grace to be able to understand like maybe like where are they coming from? I think that's a really important piece. I, that is that is so common. It's like, what happened? Why did this happen? It, it, it's the emphasis, if we're on the what and the why, then we're missing out on the how. And the how sure. is like, okay, going forward, how do I do this? Um, mm. So we just be present with the emotion, see what happens, you know, have a conversation with yourself, take a meeting with yourself, and then we can uh, keep moving forward. So if you're out there in exam land and student land and you're not doing too hot, please reach out to your mental health provider. And it's okay to struggle. I've, I always did. It sounds like Ellis did too. <laughs> Definitely. And I think like it, if you're struggling more this year, that's a really important thing. It's not a reflection on you or your ability or your worth or your value or your competency. It, it could very well be a reflection of how horrifically wild this world is right now. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, Alice. So take care and we'll see you next time. Thank you.